Amen. Muchas gracias, misionero Miguel Bermúdez Marín. Amen. Thank you very much, misionero Miguel Bermúdez Marín. May God continue to bless you greatly in this year 2023 and continue to be of a great blessing for all the church bride in this end time and in all the places where you go in this year 2023. May you be of a blessing and of confirmation to all the elect in all the congregations where you go and continue thus confirming them in the faith of this third pool. And may you continue being of blessing and light for all the brethren chosen of God everywhere you step on this planet earth in the eternal and glorious name of the Lord William, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Amen and Amen. May that blessing be for you, Miguel, and this people loves you and is with you 100%. And also to all the ministers and all the brethren in all of Latin America and present here. May God bless you in this year 2023 and pour great blessings on all of us. May it be the year of our adoption. May it be the year in which God fulfills all that is yet to be fulfilled. And God knows that if we were the ones who decide, we would ask the Lord that it be this year. But we know that there is a program, and we adjust ourselves to His program. But the desire and longing is already in our hearts that it be in this year. But we know that it is and will be according to His will, according to His perfect will. May you have, I repeat, a happy and prosperous year 2023. And as on some occasions, Brother Branham said, I want to say this to you, God bless you. Because there is where the whole blessing that we need is, that a child of God needs. The blessing of the Almighty, the Creator of heavens and the earth. He who spoke in Genesis and created the heavens and the earth is the same who will speak and create in us that eternal and glorified body. That is why we place ourselves in His hands and may He speak the word in this end time and brings forth in our lives that transformation because it is around the word that Sarah and Abraham were rejuvenated. Around all this word that we have been receiving, may God transform us. These are petitions that we speak them because they are for us and we have to speak them, believe them, receive them and ask for them cried out for them. He tells us in the Hebrews, which is the scripture that our brother William used there in this message that we will be seeing today, the mystery of the seed of the creative word, preached on October 31st of October on 1997 in Melipilla, Chile. Hebrews chapter 1. He also read in John chapter 1 as well. But in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence and he writes what we believe. See, faith must be based on what we believe, the evidence of things not seen, for by it the elders obtain a good report. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the Word of God. So, that things which are seen, and he writes, the physical, concrete, 
were not made of things which do appear. And he writes, invisible, abstract. You may please be seated. He tells us in the message, walking in faith in the physical mega projects of the divine program, preached on February 14th of 2009 in Santiago de Chile, it says, the divine projects before being carried out on earth are always in the mind of God. It is the divine thought, and from there they are spoken by the Spirit of God through the prophets of God of different times. And then, God sends from stage to stage, from age to age, and from dispensation to dispensation, a man to earth, with both consciences together, who he anoints with his spirit and transmits his divine thoughts of that mega project that God has for that time. In the Book of the Seals, on page 50, In English, page 61, the Reverend William Branham tells us, Moses, under the blood of bulls and goats, with his confession in the word of God, and God could take that simple man and put his word in his mouth, and he proved that he was Jehovah's servant, for he could walk out there and Jehovah spoke to him by vision. He walked out, stretched his hands toward the east. And now remember, God had spoke to him. It's God thought. God uses man. God spoke to him. He's right. He said, go stretch that rod in your hand toward the east and say, flies. Moses, under the blood of that goat, sheep, walked out there and took that stick reach toward the east. Thus saith the Lord, let there be flies. Never heard a fly. Walk on back. It's already spoke. It's a thought. Now it's spoke. It's expressed. It's the word of God then. It come into a human lips. A simple man under the blood of bull, bull or a goat. First thing you know, a green fly began to fly around. Next thing you know, they were five pounds per yard. What was it? Was the word of God spoken through Moses, the Creator, because under the blood, he was standing in the presence of God, and his own words wasn't his words. And he writes, the creation of flies, plagues, the staff equals the word. Today, the gospel of the kingdom toward Israel. And he writes, East equals Israel. And there he draws a star of David. And we also turn to page 240 of the same book of the seals. He says, God dwelt with us in flesh. He was the Word. Before a Word, it's a thought. And a thought has to be created. And he writes, Thought, Word, Matter. And he also writes, A thought equals, it has to be created. All right, so God's thought become creation when it was spoke by a word. That's when he presented it to you as a thought, his thought, and it is revealed to you. Then it's still a thought until you speak it. That's the reason Moses went out to pray, that pillar of fire around him, and he said, Go, hold your stick toward the east. And he writes, East equals Israel. And say, call for flies. There's no flies. But he went and held the stick there and said, let there be flies. No flies at all yet. Went on back. But the words God thought had already been spoken. It's a word. Now it's got to happen. 
And he continues to speak about the kingdom of the Gentiles, which by the spoken word will be removed, which is the scripture of Mark chapter 11. If you say unto this mountain, that is mountain is a kingdom, be removed, it will be removed. That is, the kingdom of the Gentiles will be taken away by the spoken word. He goes on to say, from the message I'm reading, that man grasps that message and begins to proclaim it to the people because in the message God gives through that messenger and gives to that messenger and through that messenger to the people, the whole project that has to be carried out is there. It is there because the Word is the seed, the original seed, and in the seed is the entire divine project that is going to be carried out. In the book of quotations, on page 91, paragraph 700, And 85, it says, The Word of God, and watch it being made real, because it's a seed, and when it is sowed, it'll take life. It'll produce just what he's talking about. If he doesn't, then it isn't God's seed. Or the sower didn't know how to sow it. He wasn't saying of God to sow seed. He might be sowing them on top of a rock or something. See? So, you see, the sower sowing the seed. God takes care of it. It falls in the right place. And there on the bottom he writes, The sower is the Son of Man. And also above, This excerpt, he writes, The seed of the spoken word produces what was spoken. And he draws a pyramid and the ages and a star of David. He continues to say, And when that word is brought by the messenger and is sown in the heart of the people, It is born in the fulfillment of the whole divine program pertaining to that time. And that is God's mega project for each age and for each dispensation. And he tells us in the message, the masterpiece, on page 26 of the masterpiece notice and it started out as the original as Jesus said the word of God is a seed that a sower sowed And he was the sower. The seed was the word. And notice, any seed that abides alone never does nothing. It's got to fall into the ground to bring forth its production again. And this seed, that perfect church, fell to the crown at Nicaea, Rome, when she became a denomination. And he writes, a seed that remains alone never does anything. And our brother William goes on to say, when it is for an age, then that project of that age corresponds to the greatest project of the dispensation. And when it is for a dispensation, 
there is the whole divine program and everything that God is going to do in that dispensation, which will be carried out gradually from stage to stage in each one of the stages of that dispensation. Let us turn on to page 144 of the book of quotations where he tells us on paragraph 1282. It says, We are not Lutherans. We are not Wesleys. Neither are we Pentecostals. We've got to be the children of this age. And there he draws a cornerstone and an arrow upward. Through the pregnancy of the Word of God, to bring forth a child of this age, the seed child. And he writes, Son of the age of the word equal seed son. He goes on to say, in this message, minister is doing the will of God until obtaining the promise preached on March 7th of 2009 in Monterrey, Mexico, it says. And now, The church bride is in anguish to give birth to Christ. It is that the word that was given by the Holy Spirit through the angel of the seventh age is the creative word. It is a seed that and with which the church bride became with child. And that is why she is in birth pains here in this passage. In birth pains to give birth to whom? To Christ. And therefore, it will be the greatest blessing that the church has ever received, which she will receive in the end time, in the last day, in the age of the cornerstone. And Christ will fulfill all that pertains to this end time. And notice in the message, what is the attraction on the mountain On page 30, it says, 30 or 31, at the bottom of the number 30, it says, Now, dear God, surely we're not a bunch of hybrid Christians. We shouldn't be. Somebody that has to be padded and babied. And he writes, not padded and babied. You don't have that kind, Lord. You have rough believers. The very presence of God sets a man's heart on fire, like Abraham. He believed God. You made yourself known to him. Then you appeared to him and performed a sign, and he believed you. You turned his body back to a young man, and also his wife, which his wife was part of his own body. Then come forth the new child the promised son. And he writes, the new child equals the son of man, S.M. And he draws a cornerstone in the ages and the arrow toward the cornerstone. And he writes, the promised son. God, you promised that it'd be the same thing in this day. I pray that you confirm this word and we'll deal with right on that one promise there that it will be like it was in Sodom just before Sodom was burnt and judgment struck Sodom the Gentile world so judgment is fixing to strike the Gentile world and the Jews got three and a half more years through the period of tribulation, Jacob's trouble, the continuing of the 70th week of Daniel. But the Gentiles are numbered. It's time to go. And you give that sign and you said it would be again. And he writes the sign. And he also writes there, it is time to go. And also in the message, question and answers, 
the one from August 30th of 1964, in the morning, on page 24, he says, And this person that's in you, which is your birth, you are John Doe. You were born in a certain month, and you were born under a certain star. And he writes, one is born under a certain star. You were born under a certain thing, and that has something to do with you. Certainly does. And he writes, and the new birth is under the star of your age. And he draws the ages, that is the bottom part, and he draws seven stars. And in the cornerstone at the top, he, he draws a star of David. He doesn't draw a star as a little star. He draws a star of David. That is both pyramids. Not like the one he draws in the ages. I know I used to. Papa used to say, I can't plant them potatoes at this time because the moon isn't right. You can't plant them potatoes, Billy. And I said, I am not planting them in the moon. I'm planting them here in the ground. And he writes, the seven ages of the church, the moon. And he draws a candlestick with the seven arms on top. And he draws the seven stars, which are the seven messengers. And above where it says moon, there above he draws the sun. He writes sun. And he makes the sun with little drawings, like rays. And above he places a star of David. Remember, each child of God in each age is born under a star, that is, under an age, under a messenger. Stars are messengers. But notice that in the age of the cornerstone, we are born under the ministry that God has reflected there in that drawing that says a lot. When you see it in the study, you will better understand that picture, that drawing, and what Brother Branham speaks about there. And under those ministries of each age, the elect of each age are born. said, all right, smart elect, go on, say the father of Brother Branham. You get a few bumps on your head and you'll learn something. I did, I did, says Brother Branham. I tell you, take a board and lay it down out there on the grass in the dark of the moon and watch what happens. That grass will die right now. Lay it on the light of the moon. You can let it lay there a week. It won't hurt a bit.
And further down it says, You plant something that spreads out on top of the earth. In the dark of the moon, watch it go right down and make it like a radish or turnip will. You plant it back the other way and watch it spread out on top of the earth. Sure, it's got something to do. And he writes, the church extends in each age over the earth during the seven ages. And in the book of the seals, on page 85, it tells us, now it says, now notice, require the kinsman redeemer, and the redeemer, kinsman redeemer, must be born of the human race. Here, that leaves us on a limb. But let me sound the trumpet to you. The virgin birth produced the product. Amen. The virgin birth produced our kinsman, Redeemer. None other but the Almighty God become Emmanuel, one of us. Emmanuel. The kinsman redeemer was met. You see how God makes a requirement and there is nothing we can do. But then grace steps in and overshadows the law and produces the product. Amen. And he writes, The virgin gives birth to the redeemer. Mary, line Jesus, that is given birth to Jesus. And the bride, line Moses and Elisha. There when he speaks, but let me sound the trumpet, notice that he's speaking about that birth of that promised son, which was fulfilled in the first coming in Jesus. And when he speaks, but let me sound the trumpet, it is because there he is reflecting what the Archangel Gabriel did, sounding the trumpet in the first coming of the Lord. And what did Gabriel bring there? The revelation of the promised son. And here Brother Branham is telling us that he says, but let me sound the trumpet to you. And there, which by revelation the Archangel Gabriel had brought, and he writes the trumpet. And remember that Gabriel will announce, as he has already done, the second coming of Christ. You sounded, you announced the first coming of Christ, and you will announce the second coming of Christ, says Brother Branham in the book of quotations. He goes on to say, now we can see that the mystery of the seventh seal is connected to the church of the Lord. It is connected to that virgin church bride, represented in the Virgin Mary, which in the end time, in the age of the cornerstone, will have the blessing of giving birth to Christ. And that church bride will have the blessing that all his children, the elect, will be transformed if they remain alive until the resurrection. And now, there are great promises for the church bride. There is a promise of a tenth vision that has to be fulfilled in this end time. The Reverend William Branham tried to have it fulfilled in his time. And since it was not the time for that promise to be fulfilled, it was not fulfilled. But he always tried to have that promise fulfilled. Book of Quotations, paragraph 1068. Our brother William quotes from there, from page 120. Now that great gift, 
Others have tried to explain and say how it was done. This can't be explained. Just wait. It will not be in operation so perfectly now. Although it was in the Reverend William Branham, but he says, it will not be in operation so perfectly now. Wait till that council of churches bring on that persecution. That's when it will happen. That's the reason I come back among you. To pray for the sick. I have never had but one thing that he ever told me in my life that I know that hasn't happened yet. That some sort of building or a tent where there will be a little building setting and I have to go in, into that and pray for the sick. That hasn't happened yet as far as I know. That's the only thing that I know. And he's speaking in January 20th of 1964. And in 1965, he departed. Let us turn for a moment to quote the one he read there. 1068 from page 120. Those that haven't written that there, he writes, the tent equals in what has not been fulfilled. The persecution and the third pool. And he also writes on the side, the tent and the little room. And also, a little further down, he writes, what is left equals the tent. Elijah prays for the sick again. Our brother William goes on to say, so that promise must be fulfilled. Let's see another passage, page 12. I am looking here to see which one it is. Page 12, paragraph 95, at the end of 94, says, and it's a great thing, I'm sure our Lord Jesus is fixing to do. And I just can't hardly wait to get in that tent. That is the bottom of And it's a great thing. I'm sure our Lord Jesus is fixing to do. And I just can't hardly wait to get in that tent. And there he draws a star of David. Notice. He says that he can't hardly wait Surely he is there in the sixth dimension, eager. If he was eager while being here in his earthly body, of entering into that place where you and I are today. And he desired, he says, I just can't hardly wait to get in that tent. What a blessing we have to be able to enter the place where Reverend William Branham was shown that all this was going to be happening. We are more than blessed. And the next paragraph where he himself says there, right there, and it's going to be something wonderful and I just know He's going to do it just before His coming. And I feel that we all are part in this. We have all been part of this place, praying, contributing to make it a reality. And he writes, He is going to do it before His coming equals the tent. It must be made. It must be built. So then, God can work in it. Our brother William goes on to say, and if he says he's going to do it, what do you think? He's going to do it? He's going to do it. And he's going to be using people for that work, 
which is a privilege to work in the divine project. There are other places where it is said that he is going to do it. Let us see if I can find something here. I will give you more information about this in some other occasion. This is all linked to the tenth vision. Therefore, it is something that God has promised, and therefore, He is going to fulfill it. You should look in quotations about the tenth vision, and there you will find more details. Those quotes of the tenth vision are at the end. At the end of the book of quotations, there are several other places. And there you are going to see many important things that will be happening. There is where the full manifestation of God will be taking place. And notice, since the year 56, he is telling us about this. Imagine, 10 years he was there. And we must see if it was spoken before that as well. Waiting for the fulfillment of that tent vision. And he was trying to fulfill that tent vision. Although he preached a lot in tent and knew about tent and knew what a tent was. Now, in vision, he finds a tent that looks like a cathedral. In other words, it was different from the common tents. And he arrives and he is transported to that day. And he sees everything that is happening. It is not the tent that he built. It is in operation. In other words, it's functioning. And when he arrives, he sees that there are activities. In other words, that the tent was not his either. And then, when he has to depart, the tent vision had not yet been fulfilled. And there is where the third pool of the manifestation of God in all of his fullness will be operating. And that will be in a time when a squeeze will come. Through the Reverend William Branham, God gave us an example of what He is going to do. And in the five samples that He gave of the powerful manifestation of the hand of God, they were all by the creative word being spoken. And He said, that is the third pool. It is here. But it will not fully operate until that squeeze comes. In other words, in His full absolute power with all those miracles and wonders being performed at an international level, not only at the local level, but also in the international level. In other words, although it was there and it was operating in him, it was operating in a limited way because it was giving a sample of what the third pool is going to be. And that third pool is mainly going to be manifested or operated in a tent cathedral. Therefore, somewhere in the midst of the bride, church bride of the Lord, the tent vision is going to be in fulfillment, and the presence of the Lord is going to be there manifesting that third pool by the creative word being spoken. On page 91 of the book of quotations, it tells us, paragraph, 792 it says now remember now in the first age was a lion age that was the lion of the tribe of Judah Christ his own influence of life taking that age that's the first beast which means power that answered by human voice. And there he draws a star of David. And he writes, Lion equals power by human voice. And notice also on 793 it says, Now, we had him coming last night with his great sword to kill. We find out that he gets killed with the sword also, the sword of the word. God's word, sharp, two-edged sword, slays him, puts him right down. Wait till the seven thunders order their voices to that group who really can take the word of God and hand it there. He'll slice and cut. And they, and he writes Moses and Elisha, that is M and E, can close the heavens. They can shut this or do that, whatever they want to. Glory, he'll be slayed by the word that proceeded from his mouth. It's sharper than a two-edged sword. 
they could call for a hundred billion tons of flies if they wanted to. Amen. Whatever they say is going to happen because it is the word of God coming from the mouth of God. And there he also writes, Revelation 11, 1 to 10. And he writes, The seven thunders and the power of the spoken word in the ministry of Moses and Elijah. It will be the ministries of Moses and Elijah that will be speaking the seven thunders. He goes on to say, Surely that was what the people entering the little room didn't understand. And they didn't necessarily have to listen. Remember that the wife of our brother Branham did not have to listen when brother Branham spoke the word and the miracle happened. The same as when Jesus spoke the word and people who were sick at a certain distance were healed. The creative word will again be in operation in the fulfillment of the tenth vision for which the word, the angel of the covenant, the white horse rider of Revelation 19 will be the word incarnate in a man and through that man it will be that we will see the creative word manifested. And many are expecting for our brother William appear before the resurrection fulfilling that. And they are setting the example as brother Branham did. The cow eating grass on top of the tree. They are putting the puzzle together wrong. This is going to be fulfilled before the resurrection. Because by that time, when the angel was showing Brother Branham the vision, everything was already in operation. Then that angel come down with Brother Branham there. But this is already an adopted ministry here on earth. And through that man, it will be that we will see the creative word manifested. Although it will not be a public show, but we will understand that it will be speaking the creative word. So, although you will not be able to see how it will be operating in a little room, but you will be able to see one thing, what Jeremiah saw, a rod of almond tree, the word of God, which he is watching over to put it to work being put to work. And you will be able to say, that is the word being put to work. The word of God. God putting his word to work and putting to work what he promised. That is going to be the third pool. And we are all eager for that third pool to be manifested in that tent cathedral that the Reverend William Branham saw. In the message, the presence of God and the name of God, preached on January 26, 2009 in Santa Marta, Colombia, it says, and of the things that will be taught, it will also be a place for teaching. If it is a place for teaching, it is a place where there is a preaching. It will be about the scriptures that speaks of the judgments of the great tribulation, the plagues, the vials, all those things. All of that will be spoken there, and what has already been fulfilled will be shown, and what is being fulfilled in those days will be made known, and what it is in the process of being fulfilled later on will also be spoken. Notice in the book of quotations, on page 4b, It tells us paragraph thirty six. 
And I want to thank you once more for something else. Praying for me last night. The first time I ever got a prayer line through like that. I don't know when without vision. Because I just went to that all the time. And how the testimonies has poured in today. It's been wonderful. What you need is a great big tent setting out here in about a four or five weeks revival. So you can just stay right with it until it's over. And he writes, when the church is completed with the last one, above he writes, tent. And notice on 37, right there at the bottom it says, right at any hour that God would permit when that final person is saved, when the completeness of the body, he writes, the church bride of Jesus has been completed, Russia could send over 100 or 200 missiles. In 10 minutes time, there wouldn't be a living thing left on this continent. When the church has been completed with the last one, belongs to that paragraph. And he writes, Russia and the atomic bombs. And USA will be destroyed. And he draws a pyramid with the ages. And where he says, when the completeness of the body of Jesus has been completed, He makes an arrow toward the pyramid and also toward the ages. That is when the whole body, that spiritual temple, is complete. And there is a place where he says, that one of them has the name of the United States. On page 77 of the Book of the Seals, notice what it says. Like the wife here, not long ago, we went over here to the supermarket, and I said, we found a strange thing. A lady had on a dress, and it was so strange, see? They, nearly all of them, don't wear dresses, you see? And somehow they're forgetful. They got out without them. So then we... They're willfully forgetful. And so then Meda said to me, she said, Billy, why is that? She said, oh, I said, it's just the spirit of the nation. And I said, when you go to Germany, they have a certain spirit. You go to Finland, they have a national spirit. You come to America, we have a national spirit. Our national spirit is frolic jokes. Do you know why? We were founded upon the doctrine of the apostles. We were founding upon leadership of great men like Washington, like Lincoln. But we have moved off of that foundation. And we know that we've got it coming. We know that an atomic bomb has got our name wrote on it. We know that slavery lays ahead of us. No need of fooling yourselves. And there he writes, USA and its slavery and atomic bombs. And he writes, Atomic bomb with the name of the United States. The United States will be destroyed by an atomic bomb. The same thing that the Vatican and Rome. They will also be destroyed with an atomic bomb. And that is in the Book of the Ages, unedited. How they will be destroyed with that fire from the north which will be unleashed upon those places and others as well, which will be destroyed by atomic fire. He goes on to say, so it will not only be miracles that will happen in the fulfillment of the tenth vision, but also a lot of the Word of God being revealed, which is the most important thing, because the Word is creative. It is the creative Word of God. 
And first, the work that God will be doing under the fulfillment of the tenth vision will be seen. Bring in the word, the revelation. And then, God will confirm, vindicate everything that has been brought with the physical miracles. But already for that time, the elect of God will have that rapturing faith. And if the adoption, the transformation hasn't happened yet, for those days it will happen. Remember that there is something that will be happening in those days. Everything is going to unfold as we spoke. Watch how the resurrection is moving. There is a process and a way. But also, this will also happen with the adoption. In the message, the spoken word is the original seed. Our brother Branham tells us on page 69. This is the one in the morning because he made a pause and then he followed on, on the afternoon with the same topic. On page 69 and 70, he says, God never placed signs ahead of his word. See? Never. In the work of God, are signs placed first. The word is placed first and then the signs. Amen. That's a scorcher. God never placed signs ahead of His Word. They were added for proof of the Word. But the Word is first. Those who are waiting for the wonders, the miracles and the signs to believe, it will be too late. The time to receive and believe and be part of that rapturing faith that is being made known is now. Let us not wait until that time. To prove it, Elijah said to the woman, Notice, to prove it, there always comes a testing stage. Bake me a cake first. Then watch the miracle happen. Come to the Word first, and then watch the miracle. The seed Word itself is what the Holy Spirit, and he writes, the Word, then comes the miracle. We receive the Word that is giving us the rapturing faith, and then the miracle is that God gives us the eternal and glorified body. The Word Then comes the miracle. He goes on to say, he wrote that there. The word, then comes the miracle. The seed word itself is what the Holy Spirit energizes. How? Can a messenger sent from God just believe some of the scriptures and not all the word? Deny part of it? The true prophet of God will proclaim the word in the last days. Denominations will hate him. He will not pull any punches on them. He will be like he was when he came at the first coming of Christ. You generation of vipers. But the predestinated will hear and will make ready for the countdown. And notice at further down it says, as the end time prophecies will repeat, I believe, as the first forerunner came from the wilderness and cried, 
Behold the Lamb of God. The second forerunner will probably do the same by pointing the people to a word-born bride. The bride of Christ will be pointing to the sky. And he writes, the age of the word. At the appearance of Jesus, screaming, Behold, the Lamb of God will come forth from his lips. God help us to be ready for this near event. I better leave it from right here. And remember that he said, And notice there how the bride, he says that the bride of Christ will be pointed to the skies, the age of the word, and he draws a cornerstone and the ages at the appearing of Jesus. Remember that he said on 1057 or 1058, Ten fifty ten fifty eight. I may be building a platform for somebody else to step on. I may be taken before that time, but I do believe that we are so close that I would never die with old age, yet at 54 years old, I'll never die with old age until he's here, see? Unless I am shot, killed, or something other. Some way killed, just old age wouldn't kill me until he come. I may not do it, But this message will introduce Jesus Christ to the world. For as John the Baptist was sent to forerun the first coming, so is the message to forerun the second coming. And John said, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. See? So it's parallel in every way. And I know it will. The message and the messengers are the same. And notice in the message, He who descended is the same one who also ascended above the heavens. Preach on April 11th of 2009 here in Calle, Puerto Rico, it says. When the fulfillment of the tent vision is reached and we are seeing the things that will be happening there, then we will better understand the whole divine plan related to the tent vision. There will be the seventh seal open. There will be the sixth seal as well. The sixth seal, the seventh trumpets, which are Moses and Elijah, and the seventh seal. Both are the coming of the Lord, who comes with his angels, with Moses and Elijah, with the ministries of Moses and Elijah. All that is going to be there manifested and in the message. Always in that manifestation of God in a new dispensation, notice there are archangels that are on behalf of the work of God that is being carried out. Notice in the message, looking at the unseen, on page 9 and 10 it says, Moses endureth as seeing him who is invisible. And at the end of his life journey, oh, I just love to say this. Someone once said to me, He said, Mr. Branham, do you think God was just when he let Moses for 40 years with those people 
and then would refuse him to go into the promised land. But the glorious part of the story of Moses, he was in the promised land 800 years later with Jesus and Elijah and was seen on Mount Carmel. And he writes of transfiguration. Not only that, but at the end of the road, when he was standing on the mountain, waving goodbye to his people, and he had looked across Jordan, and he was a hundred and twenty years old, when his last breath began to fail him, he climbed up on that smitten rock from the wilderness. And he was present, and he didn't. Three lapses. He had an angel, Paul Bearer, who took him somewhere and buried him, that the world knew nothing about it, because he had endured seeing the invisible. And he writes, the archangel Michael, and he writes, Jude. In Jude, which is before the book of Revelation, Jude chapter 1, that is the only chapter, on verse 9. Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses. Durst not bring against him an railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. If the enemy, the devil, would have taken possession of the body of Moses, he would have done a lot of harm, damage. But notice who was in charge of Moses' funeral. He had an angel pool bearer who took him somewhere and buried him that the world knew nothing about it because he had endured seeing the invisible and in the hour of his death the invisible was there. I wonder if he would have become Pharaoh, if he would have been that way. Very doubtful. But he was sure when he took the right choice. And you can be sure by taking the right choice. Joshua, 40 years later, after he had entered into the Promised Land and being the great military general, when his first battle, his enemy had walled into a place where there was no way for him to get to them. But by faith, he looked at the unseen. Because God gave Moses a promise while they were yet in Egypt. I have given you all Palestine. He had made the promise to Moses. Moses took them out, but Joshua was the one who introduced them. But Joshua was looking at the unseen, toward that dimension. And by faith, he saw the walls of Jericho laying flat on the ground, and he marched around and around in full armor, with not a doubt in his heart but believing that God would do it. And when the trumpet sounded and the people shouted, the walls fell and they took the city. Why? He seen the invisible one. The same thing that happened with Elisha and Jehazi. Allow, Lord, open the eyes to Jehazi my servant. Notice, there he looked at the unseen 
and the eyes were open, the mountains were covered in chariots of fire. Elisha was already there looking at the unseen, but Jehazi hadn't noticed. Remember, before he did this, he was walking one afternoon, and he seen a man who was standing against the wall with his sword drawn. And Joshua drew out his sword and went to meet him, and he said, Are you for us? Are you for the enemy? And the man spoke back and said, I am the captain of the host. And he writes, Prince of the host of the Lord. Joshua knowed the battle belonged to him then. And he writes, the angel equals Christ. And here he writes, Joshua, the prince of the armies. And there is where he writes, the dispensational prophets have archangels that help them. Because they see the unseen. That which Jehazi didn't see at that moment. But Elisha did. And he knew, as Joshua said there, he knew there that the battle was his. That is, that the battle was won. He goes on to say, I am in the message. The one who descended is the same who also ascended above the heavens. That is why that project of the tenth vision that was shown to the Reverend William Branham is so important. There is where the church will reach the peak part. That will be the most identified part to go. And after that, there is nothing else for the church here on earth. The next thing for the church after that stage of the fulfillment of the tenth vision, the next thing will be where? In the house of our Heavenly Father, in the marriage supper of the Lamb. Notice in the book of quotations, on page 12a, in paragraph One hundred and twenty-two, it says. Page 12a, paragraph 122, it says. There's only one phoenix left, and that's the coming of the Lord Jesus. He draws a pyramid and the ages, and he writes, The phoenix equals is the coming of the Lord. And in the message, the need to walk united in the last day, preached on February 20th of 2010 in Sao Paulo, Brazil, it says, Now Christ said that in this time we would be living as in the days of whom? Of Noah, and as in the days of Lot. Therefore, as in the days of Abraham, who was the dispensational messenger, for Lot represents the foolish virgins, but Abraham represents the elect. Abraham was the one who was in the covenant with God, but Lot was of his family. The foolish virgins are of the family of the wise virgins, because they are ten virgins, some with oil, the wise ones, and others without oil some to enter with the Lord in His coming to the marriage, that is, to unite with the Lord in His coming and then receive the faith to be transformed and go with Christ to the marriage supper of the Lamb, and the others to go through the great tribulation where they will give their lives. There is a place that we read 
not too long ago where he talks about the oil and brother William Dare places the two olive trees I don't have it written down here but if we can find it where he says he was speaking about the virgins If you find it, we can read it. But we have read that recently where he says that it's through those pipes that they uh, bring oil through them. And he writes there by the two olive trees or something like that. 2.14 What? No, it's, it's not that one. Let's say in 268. That's it, 268. We read it not long ago, but it's here. Thank you. Page 268 of the Book of the Seals, he says. Notice, here is the good part now. Notice, see that thou heard not the wine and oil. Just a little bit of it left there. But don't you touch that. And he writes, wine and oil. Now, oil is symbolizes the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. He'll give you a few verses if you want to. There is two scriptures in Leviticus 8.12 where Aaron, before he went in, had to anoint with oil. High priest, he wrote. You know, and Zechariah 4.12 of oil coming, pouring through the pipes. And he writes Moses and Elijah and said, This is my spirit, oil. Another thing, if you want to see Matthew 14.25, there was a foolish virgin on 25.25. Three, the foolish virgins had no oil, no spirit. And in Matthew 25, 4, the wise virgin had oil in her lamps. And he writes of the two olive trees, Spirit filled, spirit. Oil typifies the spirit. Oh, glory. All right, you get it? All right, now oil typifies spirit. And one symbolizes the stimulation of revelation. Oh, I like to run all over the place. Brother Branham says there, notice how great that is. I like to run all over the place. Wonder I didn't wake up the neighbors when the Lord showed me that. See? Stimulation of revelation. See? Oil and wine in the Bible is associated together, always. I got the concordance and looked. There's a string of them that like that where wine and oil goes together all the time. See, when the truth of a promised word of God has been truly revealed to his saints that's filled with oil, they all get stimulated. Wine is stimulation. Glory. I feel it right now. Stimulated with joy. Shout. See, and when it does, It has the same effect upon them that wine does upon natural men. Because when the revelation had been given of a truth of God, and the true believer filled with oil, and the revelation is revealed, the stimulation becomes so great that he makes him behave himself unnormally. They start saying that you're a fanatic or that you are this. Correct. Right. Glory. See, that's what's the matter with them now. That's right. Makes them behave themselves unseemingly. 
because they have that oil. And by the stimulus being produced, that is the wine producing that stimulus, it produces the revelation. And he writes, oil equals Holy Spirit. Wine equals the stimulus of the revelation. There, he was seeing through which ministries it was that that oil came forth. That is why he wanted to jump, scream, and run. And it is what happened there on page 80. When he also saw there Let us read this small paragraph. Page 96 of the Book of the Seals says, said, Don't weep, John, said the elder. Here comes the lion. He was the one prevailed. When he looked, here come a lamb, bloody, that has been slain. Anything that's killed is bloody. You know, it's been killed. His neck has been chopped open or something. Then blood is all over it. Here comes this lamb being slain, and he came forth, oh my, what? To make his claim on his redemption. Amen. Oh, oh, I don't... Don't you just feel like just going over in a corner, sit down and cry a while? Here comes a lamb, still bloody. John, there wasn't nothing there. All the celebrity was standing around, but there was none of them could do it. So here comes the Lamb now. His intercessory days is over, the mediatorial days. That's when this angel is going to stand there. You wait till we get in the seals, and time shall be no more. That's right. That half hour of silence. Watch what takes place in that half hour of silence. When that seventh seal next Sunday night, the Lord willing. The claim, he wrote, and half hour of silence. And a number of scriptures. He goes on to say in this message, they need to walk united in the last day. It says, some to enter with the Lord in His coming to the marriage, that is, to unite with the Lord in His coming and then to receive the faith to be changed. Notice, ones, that is, the five wise ones, represented in the five wise ones, wants to enter with the Lord in His coming to the marriage, that is, to unite with the Lord in His coming and then to receive the faith to be transformed and go with Christ to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And the others, well, to go through the great tribulation where they will give their lives. That is why they are under the sixth seal. And also the seventh seal will have to do with the foolish virgins. Because the third pool is for the church bride, it is also for the church Christianity that will not be transformed. Therefore, it corresponds to the foolish virgins, and it is also for the whole world. That is, the third pool will have an impact on the whole world, and the third pool will be fulfilled in a tenth cathedral, and the third pool is the two-edged sword, which is the word of the king. Therefore, that word will be spoken. In other words, all that was shown in five samples that were given by the Reverend William Branham, speaking to the storm so that it would go away. That is power over nature, which covers the planet Earth and also the heavens. 
also healing represented in the healing that was carried out to the wife of the Reverend William Branham, which was also by speaking the word. Although he was in Jeffersonville, Indiana, and she was in Tucson, Arizona, that is very far away. But the word has no distance. That creative word can be spoken in one place and the effect can be produced in another place. On the other side of the world, the effect can be produced. That is why he always repeated, have your antennas well adjusted, connected, with good screens and good audio and sound in the places to receive, not at the end, but from the beginning, everything that will be happening from that place. If it is spoken for a purpose on the other side of the world, that is, there are no distances for that third pool. Notice on page 93 of the book of quotations, he tells us something there. In paragraph 804, it says, I believe I'm not going to speak in his name. I'm going to speak it my in the revelation of my faith. What happened in Sabino Canyon the other day. I believe that the hour is approaching when missing limbs will be restored. And the glorious power of the Creator. I believe if he can make a squirrel appear that has no three lapses. Here is the man or woman just got a part missing and that's complete animal in itself he is God and he writes the restoration of the missing limbs he, he also writes squirrels created if he's missing an arm or a leg or an eye all of that will be restored by the word being spoken. Also speaking to the little fish, which is a type and figure of the resurrection of the dead in Christ. It is like a brother who wrote to me who has a condition in his legs. And he said, I will have to go there to obtain healing in my legs. And notice how there Brother William has already told us that all of this will be effective from a distance. I told him a few more things and there I already spoke to him now on this occasion the other thing based on what Brother William spoke here and of the Reverend William Branham I already answered him and so to other people who also have that condition or an arm or an eye but who are in another place. All those people will be benefited. All those people will be benefited. And not only from that, from any need. Because in the midst of the church for that time, there will be no limitations in what God will do for the blessing of His church. And he will begin in the midst of the elect. It says, also speaking to the little fish, which is a type and figure of the resurrection of the dead in Christ. Because that word that Christ will speak is the great voice of the trumpet. 
Christ speaking His Word, the Angel of the Covenant, the Holy Spirit, will be speaking. Also, the dead in Christ will be resurrected by the spoken word. The dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God and shall rise. He wrote there, in flesh, or in human flesh, he wrote. In other words, they will hear the voice of the resurrection. The same voice that told Lazarus, Lazarus, come forth. Remember that the Reverend William Branham also said that Ananias and Sapphira will be repeated. Peter just spoke and things happened. And notice, we are going to discuss a little bit here just for a minute. For now we are ending this study. But notice something here very important. That is in the book of Acts. In chapter 5, so we do not read too much. But we will have to read the whole chapter. Let us read from verse 1 and on, it says. But a certain man named Ananias, with Sapphira his wife, sold a possession and kept back part of the price, his wife. The same thing she did. Remember what Jezebel did? Ahab knew what she was doing with the inheritance or the vineyard of Naboth. But here it was, here it was that the woman knew what Ananias did and being private to it and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why had Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost? and to keep back part of the price of the land, whilst it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. And he draws a star of David here. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost. By hearing, see, it was by the spoken word of Peter. And great fear came on all them that heard these things. And the young man arose, wound him up, and carried him out, and buried him. And it was about the space of three hours after when his wife, see, it says, not knowing what was done, came in. And if you notice there, Peter did not say to her, look, come, they have just taken your husband out because he did this and this and that. Don't let that happen to you as well. He didn't say that to her. He didn't put his hand in for Sapphira. Because if he did, she was going to continue later on doing maybe the same thing. He was going to have a manufacturer person there. And Peter answered unto her, Tell me, on the contrary, he, Tell me, whether ye sold the land for so much? And she said, Yeah, for so much. Then Peter said unto her, How is it that you have agreed together to tempt the Spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door, and shall carry thee out. Then fell she down straightway at his feet, and yielded up the ghost. And the young man came in and found her dead, 
and carrying her up forth, buried her by her husband. And a great fear came upon all the church, and upon as many as heard these things. And there he draws a star of David. Notice he draws here in verse 4, in verse 8, in 9, in 10, and 11. In all those verses, he draws there a star of David because it is the Holy Spirit, the one who was there, speaking through the mouth of Peter. And great fear came to the church because they realized that the Holy Spirit was in their midst. Notice. What Peter did was to speak and things happened. There was a place where the Reverend William Branham says, Notice. Correct, on page 46 and 47 of the message, the spoken word is the original seed. This was in the morning, it says, all right. And when so, the Bible is manifested again like in the early days of Christ. See? Because you are a predestinated seed just like Christ was. And when the rain falls on the seed, the life produces itself. When the Holy Spirit falls, when He fell on those seed that Jesus said He chose them, when? before the foundation of the world. Then they were a predestinated seed. Is that right? Then here they hold themselves up in the upper room. This seeds, the Word, and the Word was laying on there without life in it. All of a the sudden, there came a sound from heaven as the waters began to gush down. And... It actually filled all the house where they were setting. And the seeds began to grow. It began to manifest itself. The Word of God being manifested. All right. Why then has the revival fires led up? Now, I got about 10 scriptures here. If you could just notice it on here that I ought to say it. But I've got to skip over a lot of it. And just so you get the outline of it. All right. Why then has the revival fire lit up? Now, I got to call names. I won't do it after this, lest God tells me to. But I've got to call names. I've got to say things I have to say things that I don't want to say. But in order to make this clear, you can't see now where I'm getting to. The reason I've done what I've done. I believe this is the Word. And I believe that Christ has a church. And the church is the field. We'll get to it after a while. And you've got to get the Word in the field before the Spirit can ever do anything. See? And there he writes, I have to mention names. And a star of David. And remember, that that which happens there and was written in the book of Acts since they are the acts of the church which will continue to be written because the acts in this end time are a continuity 
people who will be fulfilled that will also be written there. Notice. He continues to say, and now, we also have salvation. There he is listing the five manifestations of the power of God in Brother Branham in those five occasions. In part, that power of God was seen in part in Brother Branham. And he speaks over here now. And now we also have salvation represented in the children of a believer for whom she asked for salvation. And she was given her children. They were saved. See? She asked for the salvation of her children. And God gave them to her. And so it will be also for the elect who have children who are not in the message and who are in the world. But notice, if it was fulfilled with the children of our sister Hattie Rice, it will be fulfilled with your children as well. Every child that is outside the fold of the Lord, you claim them, and God will give them to you. You will have them in eternity. It is your inheritance. And also, any other relative, everything we love, God will give it to us. Remember that when we read that even Brother Branham's horse, his dog, even the couch was there. That doesn't mean that you are now going to be claiming couches and taking the whole pack of dogs if they have a bunch. In other words, he says, they were saved. In other words, the third pool covers a number of things or facets, and it will be in its full manifestation when the squeeze comes, and it will be manifested in a tent cathedral. While that moment comes, let us enjoy this glorious time of revival, receiving all this word, so that when the time of the squeeze comes, we will be well straightened with strong muscles of faith to receive that squeeze. In those days, if we are not yet adopted, may God adopt us so we can see the unseen. Well, It has been a very beautiful study for me and I know for you as well, where we have learned many things of which God has fulfilled, is fulfilling, and will be fulfilling also in the future. So let us stand up and we leave in this subject we have for today, the mystery of the seed of the creative Word, our dear brother and friend, Dr. William Soto Santiago.